Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Take two. Only we know this because we were talking to ourselves for a few minutes before we realised that something wasn't quite right. But welcome to the live lounge. It is Monday the 25th. The new dark season is upon us, gentlemen. I'm quite excited for this Phil Bars joined by Jack Gobby Garwood and Jala Thetan. As always, gentlemen, good evening. Evening, evening. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let Jar say his piece first because, you know, missed his airtime last week, so we've, we've got to get our fill of Mr. Eaton. Come on. <laughs> well, uh, not uh, not not uh, in the sense of at the top of the tank engine uh, graphic that is above us, everybody. That is not why I was missing uh, last night. As you might be able to tell, um, I have got a new background. Uh, unfortunately, I have been moving house over the last couple of weeks. Um, and because of that, I wasn't here last week. You picked it. What was that? Sorry? You said, unfortunately, you picked where to move to. Well, yes, but I, I was you planning had the to move to Fortress. You getting out of Sonny Army. It's completely up to you that you stayed there. <laughs> yes, but, uh, I, but I'm in... Uh, I'm also uh, in that position of like thinking, oh, okay, uh, I can move before Christmas. It'll be before the live land properly kicks off and everything like that. No, of course it doesn't because nothing ever goes right, as we all know. So because of that, it's been a bit of a mess, but I am glad to be back. Thank you very much for Dan Simpson for being in, uh, and, stop, and stopping in for, my, uh, for me over the last week. But it is great to be back and we are nearly ready and waiting to go because it is time for the Masters. Hooray, my favourite tournament of the lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we all know my opinion on this week. We all know opinion on, uh, my opinion on this. It's basically a glorified Euro tour now. It's moved to 24, but it's darts. We'll take it at this moment in time. Um, yes, and also, uh, Phil, we weren't aware of this before uh, 5 o'clock this evening. The PDC Awards came out. Well, you don't have to, like dropping it on everyone last minute, was there? It's like, yeah, let's put it out now. I missed your unequivocal enthusiasm last week, Charlie. <laughs> we all know. We all know. Yes, that is the biggest <laughs> word I know. Before I get attacked for that in the comments as well. We haven't even started yet. Say, somebody's true. blaming my bloody internet. Well, it's true. <laughs> it normally is. That's literally how it works normally. Oh, my name. As well, double B, come on, Martin. <laughs> Evening, everybody. everybody in the comments, thanks very much for being patient. We do appreciate you keeping with us. Um, but we are here now. We're going to talk about the darts. We've got a lot to talk about. Masters here. There is some darts to come on, and we're very, very excited. Yes, yeah, so we're just going to share around the links quickly, guys, so everyone knows that we are live. Of course, we have the trusty, faithful that will always be here, but we're trying to entice new people. So if you are new, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. We have loads coming up, and we do mean loads. Fresh interviews every day this week. And then on Friday, we're really excited, the launch of the walk-on. So can't yeah. wait for yeah. that. So please. Yes, the problem we got with this, though, is the fact that we're going to have the problem that we had just now. With the stream, is that what's no, going to happen? Is it, no. we're gonna, we're gonna... I, I, I know what to do now. <laughs> there, there was me trying to be up and think, well, I mean, we'll schedule these in. That one as well, Phil. <laughs> no, we know what we're doing, but no, I can't wait for the walk on. It's something that we've been planning for a while. A lot's gone into it, and it's just something a little bit quirky, a little bit different. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. You guys as well? Yeah. Very excited. Um, you you're get basically to see be... me more. How can you not be excited? Well, that is the that is the downside. That's why I'm not doing as many as as, as most. But <laughs> look, in all seriousness, uh, at the end of the day as well, Phil, it's a bit of a different one as well because that way then we're going to be able to interact with everybody else. We get your predictions and everything like that. We were planning to do this live from events. I'll be brutally honest with you, everybody. Uh, we were going to be the three of us and other people jump, uh, jumping in and out as well. Um, all the rest of the team. But unfortunately, COVID rules has meant that we're not going to be there. We're not going to be doing this from live events. Certainly for a little while. Hopefully, 
the world match play will be the first time when we do a, a walk on live in person, which would be lovely. Um, but we want everybody to get involved with that as well, particularly. We want uh, predictions, your, your thoughts, comments, everything like that. Um, in particular as well tonight, but also Friday as well. Going to be really good. Six o'clock, Friday night. Get yourself fish and chips in if you uh, like your fish and chips on a Friday, like most people do. And sit back and watch the darts. It's going to be great. Yes. And like we say, we can't wait. The Masters is here. 24. It's all new. And this year, special impotence on the Masters because there is a huge carrot being dangled. Potentially, maybe... Or is it all a smokescreen? Time will tell on that one. There's been a lot of chat on social media about this 10th spot. No doubt we'll talk about that when we get into the Masters. But first of all, let's dive into the YouTube chat room. Good evening, everyone. Loads of the regulars in. Andrew, Kieran, Simon, good evening. How are we all? Um, Juanita from Australia joining us always. Daniel. Joseph, um, Gezi Price Show for the awards, certainly was. Um, Darts Tracker, good evening, Carl, Martin, Rachel and Paddy. Remember, let's get that chat room absolutely buzzing this evening, everyone, because it was mental last week. Plenty of comments going off, which is what we like to see. Well, I suppose we've got to dive straight in, gents, haven't we? Only one place to go, and we are going to go to the Masters Draw. Well, we'll come into that in a minute. Don't worry about hey, that. There's plenty lovely. of chit-chat about that as well. Um, but then we have I, the draw. I have been away for a couple of weeks, so I've got a lot of time now to talk about Q School. Yes, that's what we like to see. I've, I've, used to re- I've actually been doing, would you believe this? I've actually been doing some research on Q School. Whoa, whoa. Who are you? We, 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 you we are, don't though. do that here. We fly by the seat of our pants. Hey, I, I've had a lot of time. I've had a lot of time. Well, whilst in between getting things done, we bring Danny for one week and he's threatened Phil. That's what it is. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, this, this, this guy. Is good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're gonna dive straight in. The top eight seeds do not join the party until round two. So we've got. Are we, are we being nice? Are we calling it a prelim, or are we gonna call it a first round? It's a Euro Tour. It's a Euro Tour Friday where we don't get anything round. happening. Let's see how it works. It's like, it's a Euro Tour Friday, best of 11 legs. Yay. I mean, look, it's great that there's live TV darts. I, 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 I get that. But I fear that they have extended the tournament for extending the tournament's sake. We don't want best of 11 games on the telly. It just makes the tournament feel inferior for me. Yeah, look, I'm I'm not over keen if I'm being honest. Um, I'd like to have gone. If you're going to do it, go to 32. Um, I'm yeah. not keen on the the, the the 24, um, 16 or 32 for me personally. But hey, Matt and Barry don't get much wrong in long term. They'll probably get it right. Remember, anyone in the chat room, if in doubt, please revert to rule number one. If you know, <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> um, right. As always, gentlemen, we will come down to the final four in a minute, but let's run through these first round games. And there are some belters. First up, top of the tree, two players that had really good world championships, Joe Cullen against Stephen Bunting. Now, if this was first to ten, I'd be all over this game. But over short format, funny things happen. Um, where Where do we see this one going? Because both can lay a claim to win this one, but ultimately only one will and can. So where are we going, Jar? It's a tight one, I think, Phil, because we're in this position now of Cullen had a great world championships uh, the last time we saw him on TV, but he blew a 3-1 lead against Michael Van Gogh and, you know, he only, he only getting two shots at the ball from 3-1 up. I appreciate you're playing against Michael Van Gogh, but you should be doing better, in my opinion, personally. Um, to try and close out that game when you were playing the game of your life. Stephen Bunting making a semi-final, 4-3 up as well against Gerwin Price, the eventual champion. Just to remind God that, you know, eventual champion in the shape of <laughs> Gerwin Price. World, the world number one. Um, but anyway, back to the point. Uh, Stephen Bunting, um, look, he, he's played fantastically well. There's no doubt about that. Um, 
this is a very close game. I'm with you. This should be best of 19 all the way, but it isn't. So it, it all depends on who gets out the blocks quickest. And I like Cullen at the moment. There's something about Joe that really is enticing me here. Um, Steven's playing exceptionally well, but I don't think he got off to the best of starts in games at the World Championships personally, where I think Cullen did. Maybe that's the recency bias. I don't know. And Cullen obviously did bits as well in the last leg play tournament in the Players' Championship quarter, in the Players' Championship finals as well. So on that basis, I'm going to go with Cullen to just edge this one. I think it'll be 6-4. It won't be anything... Spe- I, I don't think there'll be anything spectacular about the game. It'll be a very good game, but I think Cullen just edges this. It's a fair assessment. Are you agreeing, Gob, or are you going for the bullet? Um... <clears throat> I don't know, like Jar said, this is this is a really close one. Um, both had really, really good world championships. Both have recently changed their equipment. Collins Darts were released re- recently. Buntings will be available, I think, for public in the next couple of days. Um, and, and both having renewed success with it. Both seemingly to have, have made a change that, that's worked out for them. Um, if you're Cullen, you've got one on the Premier League, and I think having that much more on this game might just be a little bit detrimental to him. So I'm going to go Bunton. I'm going to go the opposite way. Mm. I get the casting vote. That's what we like to see. Um, I'm going Joe Cullen. I just think there's something about him right now. And I, I think this will be the breakthrough year for Cullen where we see him edging closer to the top 10 than we do yeah, falling but... out of the 16 yo-yos for a bit. This is the year that I think Joe Cullen does some damage. With the best will in the world at this point, and I love Joe, I've got a lot of time for him. How many years have we said that about the rock star, though? That's my only concern. We've said that so many years. This is the year of the breakthrough. No, this is the year of the breakthrough. It feels a bit like the boy will cry wolf in this scenario. Like, there is nothing wrong, in my opinion, of being a top 16 player. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But do we think that he'll get to that level is the biggest is the biggest concern of, of being realistically able to challenge the top 10 challenging for majors because let's not forget about this if he wins this tournament then he's in the premier league for the first time in his career and that'd be a massive launch pad yeah 100 percent. I, I just think that the equipment change has worked and i think it's taken him to a new level um so i'm expecting big things from the rockstar this year Really, really am. Game number two. Even though we are only tournament number one of the 2020 season, potentially this is a must-win game, especially for one player, potentially both Mm -hmm. in Bully Boy, Michael Smith and Adrian Lewis. It's an absolute howler of a draw for both of them with everything on the line. A lot of talk around Adrian Lewis especially from our channel, from the interview that, that Stuart Pike gave to us, that his exact words were, one more year, one more poor year and he's gone. So I know this isn't ranked. However, just a, a run here, a performance here can set you up for the rest of the season. And this could be an yeah. absolute mouth-watering game. I think that's what it is. I, I don't think a loss immediately makes Adrian Lewis a bad dart player. But he needs a big year and a big result here, a convincing good performance result or a good run here as well against tough opposition. Michael Smith, Gary Anderson, Gezi, that's a horrible potential route to the final, right? And or I'm looking a bit far ahead there, getting a bit ahead of ourselves. But A.D. Lewis needs something to springboard his season off and to just get that confidence flowing through him again. He needs a win. And they're not easy to come by in the PDC anymore. They don't give them out as, as free sweets when you go to the dentist, but he needs a win, and this is as tough an assignment as, as you're going to get in that first round in, in Michael Smith. So, um, like I said, horrid draw. Um, could be an absolutely fantastic game. Both of these players at their peak are magnificent to watch, play the game in the right way in full flow, um, and, and superb. But you have to say, based on recent performances, ranking, and, and, and actually ability at the minute, that Michael Smith shades this one. Are you the same jar or are you going for the jackpot? 
I'll be honest with you, this should be quite an easy win, I think, for Michael Smith. The way Adrian Lewis has played over the last two or three years and with Pikey. Um, one more bad year, we'll drop out the top 32 and that could be him dropping down like a stone. As you said many times on this channel, Phil, Adrian Lewis is arguably one of the greatest under receivers in the PDC's history. Between 2011 and 2013 and potentially even 14, he was arguably the great, he was arguably the best player on Planet Darts at that point. There's no doubt about that. And he should have won more titles. Admittedly, you go up against Phil Taylor in the match play final of 2013 in the Grand Slam semi-final of 2013. You know, at that point, Phil was towards the peak of his powers. But it's difficult. But AD was the best starts player in the world and he could have done better than that. I think this is a massive, massive year for Michael Smith. He's obviously signed with uh, Darcy Promotions as well, new, new management stable. That will give him, I think, a bit of confidence and a bit of stability after not necessarily the best year, but this this tournament will give him nightmares because if he wins this tournament a year ago when he has three darts to win it, this tournament will give him nightmares. He'll want to go one better this year. I'm, I'm thinking Michael Smith will beat A.D. Lewis. I think he'll beat him comfortably. I'm going for a hat-trick as well. I think the bully boy gets over the line. I had a decent WhatsApp chat with him the other day. He's put some time in. He feels refreshed. He feels ready. So I'm going for bully boy as well. Before we move on, an interesting question from Rach in the chat room because it's about one of the players. We're going to throw it in there. Fantasy darts. Joe Cullen, win Joe Cullen wins the Masters. Barney wins a tour card. Who would you go for for the 10th spot? <laughs> Rach, I'm not even going to dignify that with a response. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, thank, thanks for tuning in, but nah. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Uh, look, even if he does get a talk card, which look. I genuinely believe he will, right? I just think that European Q school is, is, in terms of ability, not as competitive as the UK Q school. His name will get him through a lot of early rounds as well, just because somebody says they're playing Barney, somebody's going to crap themselves, right? That's how it works. So he hasn't got to work too difficult. One good day in the know? first set, and he's into the second set. Yeah, I just think, look, he still showed in glimpses when he was a tour card holder that when he turns it on, he's exceptional. The same as A.D. Lewis, right? A.D. Lewis has not been playing horrendous in the last couple of years. He's been playing well for three legs and cracked for five legs, and that's the issue, right? A.D. Lewis's winning legs, or good legs, in the last couple of months have been superb. And I expect Barney to do the same. And I expect him to win enough of those to get through Q-score. It'll be the consistency Look, in the crap legs that's the issue. Yeah, but, okay. Barney, I appreciate this is about uh, who they'll pick, and they'll pick Cullen, I think. I know Barney sells out readers all around the world, but I think Cullen is probably what Sky wants, so they'll get him. Um... That's a question. Going back to your point about Barney uh, and about in glimpses, when was the last, apart from the Players' Championship Finals in 2019, when was the last time he did anything at a tournament on his own without the help of the greatest player that's ever picked up a dart? Did he not make a Pro Tour final the following year? And lose to Andy Lewis? He made a Pro might have been in 2019, year. yes, but he, he might have done yeah. it in 2019, yes. Yeah. But, okay, so you've got that point and you've got the Players' Championship Finals. Apart from that, he doesn't... He, I don't think... He, there's no way, in my opinion, that Raymond Van Barneveld wins a tour card. Not with the strength of the players that already have to go to Q School in the final stage. Never mind other people that will it's be quite well to qualify there as well. It's the European it's not, Q School. A, like I just said, his name, his name, the respect that the people in that Q School will show, especially the young Dutch players... Will give a lot of them will give him too much respect. The same way that Van Gerwen did it when he first came over. When Van Gerwen first got destroyed in the press for over celebrating, he came out and over openly said, The only player I won't do it against is Barney because I respect him too much. And that's a player with a tour card, right? These young up and comers are going to have exactly the same respect for him, if not more. And that immediately puts him on the back foot. The same way when Wright gave away the walk on to Taylor in his final match play, right? Which should never have happened, stupid mistake. 
he's still got the ability, still a five-time world champion, whether or not he's a PDC underachiever in the same bracket as A.D. Lewis or not. Right? He was crap at the world, lack of effort. The thing is, if he doesn't get through Q school, then we all know, don't we? We all know he's not prepared to put the effort in because he won't have practiced or, or got there. Unless he loses three straight days of 100 average in the first round, then I'll cut him some slack. But if he doesn't get through it, then we know he's not prepared over to and... put in the legwork like he's promised for the last four years, which is the issue I've had. Well, with. exactly the Somebody point. Somebody tweeted me the other day, why do I hate Barney? I don't hate <laughs> Barney. I hate <laughs> the standard we hold to the man who doesn't deliver. Right, quick point before we're going to get back on, because I know we've got to go on to Dozen versus King, because we'll talk q school in a bit, and I know we've got Tizzle waiting for us on the line, so I'll, I'll hold by about this. Over in Matt says they'll only need to average 70 to beat him. I don't even think they'll need to do that. I'll average 65. We saw what it was like in the <laughs> Modus League. So at times, he just wasn't on He just times he wasn't on it. Anyway, get your popcorn ready. <laughs> Moving swiftly yes. on. Jesus. Yes. Moving on. Nothing yes. to see here. Nothing yes. to see here. Um, We'll talk Huge about game. we'll this talk part. about Barney. I'm sure a bit later on Q School when we get yeah. to that point of the show. Sorry, sorry, Barzi. Up next, Durant against King. What an absolute belter of a first round game this could be, with the winner to play Rob Cross. And let's be fair, if you could pick any one of the seeds, you'd be in and around this one. So a huge chance for the winner of this game. Yeah, completely agree. Um, two of the more exciting players last year, I think, despite not having overly extrinsic personalities. Um, Glenn going on to win the, um, the Premier League. I think Mervyn King had a great year, a bit of a resurgence. Um, I think he's becoming more and more likeable as well to the common Dart fan. He, he had a period where he was a little bit moany, shall we say, was, was old Merv. Um, but I think he's <laughs> adhering himself to the public a bit more. Um, this is a great game from again from two players that will just get on with the game. They won't try and do anything to put each other off. They're, they're, there's no attempt for that. They'll go up. They've got three darts. Their opponent's got three darts. And if they can't beat him with those three darts, then they'll shake their hand and try again the next time. Um, a, a good game for finishing, I think. Yeah. Have I got to talk about this game now? Because <laughs> I don't yeah. think Dozen was particularly happy with me. The, I don't think Dozen was particularly happy with me the other week <laughs> when I decided to chastise Dart's Twitter for talking about a triple crown that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Look, okay. First of all, I've got a lot of time for Glenn. I've got a lot of time for his manager. I've got a lot of time for the whole stable. I've met Dozen on numerous occasions. He's a, he's a lovely bloke. Um, my biggest, before I say anything, my biggest issue on it is this. The Premier League is not a, not a major. I appreciate we talk about hashtag what's a major and all that. The Premier League is not a major because it's unranked. Biggest unranked title to win, but it ain't a major. Simple plan as that. Can't have a rank, you can't have a, 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 a major that isn't ranked. Moving on. That's all it was before anybody says that I don't care about the Premier League. I do. I understand its position, but I think that the Premier League just needs a bit of a revamp. But anyway, so the point. Um, does uh, versus King, great game this. Um, this is very, very tight. Probably go to a last leg decider. I am going to take... Oh, God. I, I want to take Merv purely and simply just because I love his facial expressions, but I don't think it'll be Merv. I think it will be Dozer. Dozer, I think, will win it. Just. You didn't give us a, a cool gob. Where are you going on it? I get away with it on here that easily, son. This fence I'm sat on is hurting my backside. <laughs> Someone <laughs> remove these splitters. Um, where did you go, Jar? I went to the last legger. Is that because you're scared of him? In case he's lurking in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Because he has Hashtag what's amazing, you, know? you wait until Rids pops up and calling me daft lad again. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
just because it's funny, I'm gonna I'm gonna let Phil have the casting vote again. I'm gonna say Merv picked it in the last leg decider. I think is I said this would be a good game for finishing, but actually in terms of scoring, I think Merv has the edge at the minute. I just think he's that little bit more consistent. Depends what practice Glenn's done over over the break, obviously, but he's still very much on the recovery back from the issues he faced when he was fighting COVID. So I just think that Merv's had a, a clean bill of health, has, has probably had a nice little rest over Christmas um, and be ready to go again. So that's where I'm going. I can make an argument and a case for both players to win this game, as we all can. And I think it might come down to one bit of genius on a finish. And I'm going to go Duzzer to win 6-5. With a one, two, four finish. I'm even going to give you the finish. Oh, Mystic Mardell. Going to go one, two, four, he's going to go 20, 54, bullseye. <laughs> he's not on this weekend, is he? Is it ITV no. tournament? Um, and then next up, I don't know. I. This, this game, I don't know what I feel about this. Ian White against Mensal Sulevich. Um, I There's think a reason this game is going on first. There's a reason this game is going on first. The top 24 players in the world, and we still managed to get a tie like this. All I'll say on this one, right, is this. You know, only people who like Ian White and Mensal Sulevich are actually excited about this game. No one, nobody else in darts is excited for this game. Well, I don't think so anyway. This is not going to be a great yeah, game. Right, dance, I don't score think. attempts some dart darts again. Ooh. I'm interested to see what Ooh. 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 <laughs> Whether we get sprinter um, or marathon run at pace. Yes. Look, I actually yeah. think it's quite a big year for both of these players as well. I think that they've right. both been in where they are in the rankings for a long time. Mensal's obviously dropped a little bit. Um, and a former Premier League participant himself, Ian White, and they've been given that chance. But we thought with that run at the players 18 months ago that he might start kicking on with his with his TV record. Now, didn't really materialise. Um, this is the year. It has to be the year. If Ian White doesn't kick on and hit a TV event, you can only keep playing at the level he's been playing at on the floor for so long. And I just think eventually you get to, what's the point? What's the point then keep doing that on the floor to not do it on the TV, which is where the money is, which is where the accolades are, which is where the recognition is. He's got to deliver. So where are you going? Nathan Aspinall. <laughs> 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 well, if God doesn't want to, God doesn't want to get, uh, God doesn't want to get off the fence. I'll, I'll say it. White. Okay, all right. If you're gonna go white, I was gonna go men's sword. Just get this game over and done with, and move on. God, I'm not looking forward to this game. <laughs> Make him feel this side again. <laughs> I'm just not looking forward to this game, but I just think men's sword will do him. You know, I, I'm not. I, 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 look, everybody that watches this show, everybody, everybody watches this show knows that I will not hide my emotions on things. I'm not looking forward to this game. I'm glad it's first. It'll be very much the last thing I write about on Friday night. <laughs> um, I'm going Mensa to win it. I just think he's more consistent on TV. Next game up, I am absolutely buzzing for this one. I think this could be an absolute power, a ferret. Johnny yeah. Clayton against the special one, Jose de Salza. And again, over this best of 11 format, I can make a case for both guys winning this game. And I I think this could arguably be game of the night if they both play well. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. Um, I, think it, I think it will be an absolute belter of a game. This is going to be really good fun. Um Look, Jose, to me, doesn't need to worry as much because obviously he's already in the Premier League, but this would have been a massive chance for him to do so if he were to get there. I've got a funny feeling, actually. Uh, this is a year for... Uh, this is another big year for the ferret. 
I'm really excited to do this. I, 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 I'm really excited by the ferret. Jose, we all know how much I love the bloke. We know how much I love the bloke. Anybody regular on this show knows that. But I think this is the year for Johnny, and I'm thinking it's a cracking start. Once again, taking on Michael Van Gerwen in the Masters, where, Philip Bars? What happened last year? Remind me in the first round. What happened last year? What, in, in the ago. Masters? Oh, no, I, 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 I can remind you if you want. I can, I can, yeah, well, yes. I was in Greece that time for that for that <laughs> match. Well, I can remember what happened. Johnny Clayton spanked him. First d- defeat in the uh, MK. Stop What's that? Can. Stop the count. Stop the count. Stop, <laughs> stop, stop the count. <laughs> But no, I think that I think that Clayton beats uh, De Souza here. I, I really do. I think Clayton will just just do him six four. God, where you going, mate? Jose, for me, um, he, he had a fantastic year last year, and I think this year he just builds on that and goes from strength to strength. He's got the confidence. He's been there and done it on a TV stage now. I think his floor game will get even better. I think he's he's firmly. Set now, he's done four rotations of the PDC calendar. Um, and all right, there's a lot of people currently saying Jose, if he doesn't miscount, A, he's got to have worked on that. If he hasn't worked on that, it's incredibly naive and, and dangerous and risky as a dark player. But B, I just think Johnny throws one or two more loose darts than Jose, and I think that will that will keep him that at arm's length in a couple of legs. I am going for Jose to win 2-1 on the miscounts and for Ferret to win 6-4 in the match. Go have a little side bet <laughs> on the miscount. <laughs> never underestimate. Didn't they play- you just interviewed him, Philip. No, never underestimate a Ferret. <laughs> and also told us that many a time. Next game, a very intriguing game for different reasons, and I'll perhaps fill people in in a minute on this one. The World Match Play Champion, Dimitri Vandenberg against Hollywood, Chris Doby, gentlemen. Two men with a lot to play for. Yeah, could you fill us in first, though, before I look like an idiot and say something, and you go, actually, no, this is happening. I'm led to believe that Dimitri is booked in for the knee operation straight after the Masters. Oh. See, now, so, that can go either way as well. That, that information doesn't really the, help. I get there's a break coming in PDC it, darts, but it's either a last roll of the dice before the op and, and try and earn as much money as possible, or it's a uh, get this thing over and done with, get on with it, get on the operating table and, and get that done and get recovered in time for the rest of the events. Like that that doesn't sway it either way for me, which is an issue <laughs> when I'm trying to pick a winner. Um gonna be brutally honest, Chris Doby was really disappointing for me last year. Really disappointing for me. Um a lot of high hopes for a player. He's still got loads of time to turn it around and, and, and progress, but We've seen him have some absolute ding-dong battles on TV. Um, he seemed to be playing in a lot, a lot of lockdown and online darts competitions. Um, he, he beat a friend of mine the other day, 5-0 with 100 average. Um, never looked like he was in any trouble whatsoever. And yet, he got to Pro Tours. He got to the Autumn Series, said it was on the worst of his life, or the Winter Series, whichever one it was. Didn't really deliver on any of the rest of the Pro Tours. Didn't actually do that much on the home tour, considering he'd been playing online darts a bit. Um, and okay, had a, had a good win at the Worlds, but didn't back that up either. So I think Dimmy wins. If Dimmy is inclined to win, this match is all about Dimmy. If he, if he rocks up and, and wants it and wants to get some money in the back pocket before his up, then, then I think he wins this one. If not, then happy for Doby. Um, push on and, and give a Crack at Wavy. Where are you going, Jar? Um, tough. This because it all depends on, like you, like you say, it all depends on which Dimmy turns up. If we get the Dimmy that's 
for the one to best a phrase, pissing about in the first and all that sort of stuff, then it could be a close game. If he turns up, throws his darts like he did against Ricky Evans at the Grand Slam and throughout the um, throughout the majority of, of that tournament, this could be pretty over pretty pretty quickly. But I, I, there was something about Dobes that really intrigued me, Philip, at the World Championships. Something that really intrigued me. The action has looked better than it has for, for months. He looked like he enjoyed it. He, he had a smile on his face, which I hadn't seen for months. But I still think that Dimitri had a little bit too much for him. I'm going to go with a 6-3. Uh, heart versus head. I like both of these. Dimitri's playing better. But something in the back of my head says Doby wins. Don't ask me why, because every every stat you look at says Dimitri should win this. And he probably should. But for some reason, I've got this nagging feeling that I think Doby's going to win. But I can't say, well, I can't back it up with a stat. It's just one of those feelings. Dimitri probably wins 6-1 there. But yeah. one, one of them. Works. Up next, a world championship repeat. These two have met quite a lot recently, and they're normally belters. The Polish Eagle, Krzysztof Ratajski, against the board killer. I mean, the wizard, Simon Whitlock. <laughs> Don't say that too loudly. People come for you in the comments. Don't say that to Tell him. Tell me I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah, you will, actually. I'll make this pretty simple. As will, Whitlock as wins. will female dark player compatriots of his. <laughs> yes. Um, I'll make it pretty simple. Whitlock wins quite comfortably. 6 2. Retiski ain't, oh, oh. ain't the best to get an out for a quick. Retiski ain't the best for getting out out the blocks quickly. And I think Whitlock wins this comfortably. 6 2. Balls in your court, Mr. Garwood. Can you find a forehand winner? Well, I don't know. <laughs> See, this is, this is probably the hardest one to predict of the season because of the layoff from the world. We don't know who's actually played what. This is normally the event where they start chopping and changing equipment and, and all of that rubbish. Like, Whitlock had a, had a great year last year. He had one of those years that keep him in the top 16. That means we're talking about him going, how is he still in the top 16 for another two years? Um, Ratajski, disappointed at times last year. Didn't make the most of opportunities that he had, lost a couple of, of televised or European tour games that you perhaps thought he was the better player. Um, got away with it at the Worlds for a long, long time. Went a lot deeper than perhaps his performances suggested he should have, which is the complete opposite to Ratajski. Normally he plays better and loses. So it just depends what he can put together. Another player that 2021 is really big for, um, and I'm, I'm going to back the Eagle. Oh, sorry. I will say this though, very, very quickly. I will, I will say this very, very quickly, by the way. I should stress that Ratajski did beat Whitlock 4-0 at the World Championships last time out, but I, I've got a funny feeling that Whitlock will do it. I'm still happy. Am I going for an eagle or am I going for a wizard? You're a wizard, Harry. I'm going for the Simon Whitlock to beat Ratajski. Six legs to four. And then, final game of round one. Chin, Daryl Gurney against Jeffrey Dijuan. And we saw signs at the world that the chin is putting super back in front of it. We saw him flex his muscles and look more like the Daryl Gurney that wins major TV titles, gentlemen. Couldn't agree more. Um, he, he looked really solid at the World Championships. He sort of flew under the radar to start with. Um, there looked to be that little bit more determination in his game. He, he looked like he was up on stage with a purpose rather than just getting the darts out of my hand, get on and, and get back off again. Um, I think the longer that we're not talking about Daryl Gurney, the better it is for him as well. I think he's just able to, to go about his game, go about it um, and, and do what he needs to. He looks to have 
reset the action a little bit um, and he looked pretty solid and I'm going to back him all the way for this one, I think. I think this yeah. will be a clean sweep. Uh, it is a clean sweep, 100%. Jeffrey hasn't looked the same since the, the magical run of 2018 um, when he beat MVG um, in the UK and the world match play. He hasn't the same since. He hasn't kicked on. And Daryl for me, has really started to come back firing. Like, you know, it, it took a last leg decided to get rid of him in the World Championships against Gezi. Two months ago, that would not have happened. Gurney would have crumbled because he was just on that sort of a downward spiral. But I think, to me, I think that he knows that the pressure is that there's no Premier League this year unless obviously he wins the Masters, which, you know, is, is, a, is a possibility. If he wins the Masters, great. But if not, then there's no Premier League, so he doesn't have to worry about it. And looking at his stats, apart from a match play semi-final, he ain't defending much this year. So he can really go and attack this year. So, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, looking at it now, obviously, he's, he's got a couple of... Um, he's got a couple of Euro tours to defend. And I think he's got a European Championship semi-final as well to defend. But he's not defending a horrendous amount of money. So... I, I, I think he's in a good position where he can go to tap the year. So I, I, I'm going with Chin here. Chin comfortably wins this one. I, I'm with you. I'm making it a Chin clean sweep. Right, everyone, that is round one all done and dusted. You know what comes next. I would like a final four. I want your semi finalists and then who win, or who wins from these. So top half of the draw. Who will be semi final number one, gentlemen? Do you want me to go first, Gob? I don't mind. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that the world number one and the world champion, I'll just keep reminding you about that every time. Gerwin Price <laughs> will come through. Where he plays. This is tight, but I'm going to go with a bit of, uh, not necessarily a rogue pick, but I don't think this is a pick that most people would go with. I would probably say, oh, don't you know what? Sorry, I'll change your mind now. I'm going with Duzza. Go in price against Glenn Durren. He's got, for me, he's got a really good route to a court, uh, to a semi-final there, Duzza, for me. Um, he's got Rob Cross in the next round, which I'm not being funny, you'd probably take right now. As a seat, you know, as a non seeded player, take going on the top eight, and then he'd have the winner of Nathan Asper, Lerman, and Mensor Sudovic or Ian White again, not a bad draw. So, the Premier League champion can go and win a second unranked title potentially. Uh, on the television, no, I'm only joking, you know, that uh, very, very uh, interesting semi final. Go in price, Glenn Durrant in the first semi final. Do you want me to go in my second semi final, Phil, or, or are we going to go around no, the houses? No, 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 as you're there, go on, second one as well. Michael Van Gerwen, obviously, plays Peter Wright. That's look, they're the, they're, they're the top three in the world for me Price, Van Gerwen, and Wright. They'll be there or thereabouts. It is going to be them too. Michael Van Gerwen against Peter Wright, Gerwen Price against Glenn Durren. Job, over to you. How many of the same? Were you going rogue or different? I have won the same. <laughs> I you really love a rogue pick cooking. at the Masters, don't you? You, you I smell you something really cooking, love. and it is a little bit of revenge. I think the Flying Scotsman beats the world number one in the quarterfinal. <laughs> Big year for Gary. Big year for Gary, he's told us. So this is the perfect way to put down that marker. And he will play Mervyn King. The, the same logic with you. I think that's a really nice part of the draw to be in. But I back yeah. King, not Durant. So uh, same logic. I think he, he comes to that part. Not writing off Nathan Aspinall or any of the rest. But I just think that actually the form players in that part of the draw are Glenn and Mervyn. 
the players that had the best year last year are Glenn and Mervyn. So whichever one comes through that, I think has a really good chance of progressing. Uh, in the bottom half, this is where it's the same. It, it's Van Gerwen. I think he's tested, but I think that we've seen in years gone by where he doesn't win the World Championship or, or where he has a, a painful one. He responds pretty early, likes to set down a marker at the start of the year to maybe take his foot off the gas in between the year and, and go again and peak towards the back end. But he needs to start brightly to let everybody know that he wants 2021 to be his. And this is the most bizarre pick I'm going to pluck out. But actually, I'm going Gurney. You picked worse before. You definitely that, picked that, worse. That run at the World Championships just makes me think that there's something about Daryl Gurney that's going to see him back in the top eight pretty quickly this year. Not my no. favourite player to watch. <laughs> not my favourite player for his, his, the way he goes about his business or, or holds himself on stage or anything. But in terms of as a dark player, I think he scores very well. Um, and his finishing is normally pretty solid. So, yeah, I've, I've got Gurney. As I said before, okay. you picked worse on this show. Right, gentlemen, where am I going? Well, you know, we're, we don't want to get picked. And Gerwin and possibly yeah, Snakey, but probably not. It's just who you're bringing out from Section 2 and are you going Snakey? And Section 4. Yeah, that is literally... You've just beat, beat me to the punch there, Carl. <laughs> right. Just get just get it over and done with. Just get, get Price right. and Van Gogh in the right. semi-finals, lad. Come on. No, you see, judging by his Instagram, I think Price could lose early. I'm not convinced he's picked up a dart that much since the Worlds. I think the world champion is going to be on itself. No, because he's been knocking the walls down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Same way with that sofa's not going to pay for itself for, for our favourite Dutchman. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, I, I think it is a very nice safe. I think, I think Desi might get beat early. Well, do you think so, he wants to go? Do you think he wants to go back to building the houses? No, I, I, I just think that he might be slightly under underdone. Where at the Worlds early on, he was wasn't at his very best. He was beatable early, and I think it might be the same. But he didn't here. get beat, did he? No, he didn't, and he was a worthy champion. No, but that's However, when you've got you chances. Get, the same as Van Gerwen, you get a chance at him early. You need yeah. to take it. Apart from his finishing right. in the semi-final and final, I think Gezi was very beatable for the entire tournament. Yes, he went on to win it. Don't give me if my aunt had balls and all that sort of stuff. But actually, <laughs> in terms of his performances, there were opportunities to beat Gerwin Price at the World Championship. There were I, 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 I don't disagree with you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to be one of those that go down. He was flawless throughout. Of course, he wasn't. But you know. The, the, I, I think the first time, personally, I think where he'll, he could potentially get beat is, like you say, Gob, against Gardy. That's the thing. All right, so I've got Gary losing as well. I think the quarterfinal will be Joe Cullen against Michael Smith. Philip. And Come on now. I think New kids on the block are coming back. Yeah. I, oh, I, tell, I was going to show my age there. I was about to burst out into a classic New Kids on the Block song. And then I was thinking, none of our audience will have a clue who New Kids on the Block are. <laughs> I was about to go hang in front. I was about to go hang in front of the darts either, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> semi-final number one. I am going Bully Boy Michael Smith will play Glenn Durrant. I think whoever get, it, I, I'm with you boys. I think whoever gets through that Durant versus King match will get through to the semi final. It could easily be Michael Smith against Mervyn King as well. I think whoever comes through yes. that game makes the semi final. Yes. And in the, bo yes. the bottom half, obvi obviously Michael Van Gerwen will play <laughs> Peter Wright. I just don't see the others consistently getting it right. However, 
I call it now. MBG smashes right in the semi final and makes the final. But we'll come on to that in a minute. So, yeah, <laughs> I am going. <laughs> oh, Philip. Bully boy Michael Smith to play Glenn Durren in one semi final. Michael Van Gerwen to play Peter Wright in the other is my final four. So hang on, Phil. In the By the way, you did last week. I can't remember if it was Mason or if it was just Stuart Pike, but you said there's a, a three pronged top three in the world brewing for this year, and you've only picked one of them to make the semi final. <laughs> yeah, because the Masters comes too soon. Plus, <laughs> because can I point out you didn't include Peter Wright in that list? You picked Gary Anderson instead. <laughs> I just think that. <laughs> Out of the round two players that I know, one, two, three, four potentially could be using new equipment, which could be interesting. This I'm, is this is the tournament that they all that they all tinker. So I'm going for the that. thing is what right. because because the the majority of them, by the way, as well, the majority of them are already in the Premier League, so they don't have to worry about it. It's only Wade and Chisnell who aren't. So. Also, by the way, we've got actually got a couple of um, got a couple of things in here as well. People actually know who new kids on the block are. Phil, you got Wadita and Gary, yeah, yeah. who you know who, who who know who we who new kids on the block are. Um, right, you so wait till we find, find... debate on the top five boy bands of all time. You wait till that appears on Twitter when we're on the road for one year for one event. <laughs> can, I just, can I just point out as well that the, the point now on the Premier League, you said the only two in are Wade and that aren't in a Wade and Chisnell, the only one that's not in is Chisnell. Wade's not getting in in a million years. He could win this and the UK Open. He ain't getting in. No, if Wade wins the Masters, mate, they're going to have to put him in. You know that, and I know that. Nah. TV they'll still tournament, find mate. Some... They'll, they'll still some TV get titles. Out of TV title, mate. Well, I, you know it. I you, on that. Well, you know it as well as I do. I can't if wait for Wade to win it, and then Nick Chisner will go, oh, no, it's based on last year's performances. And you're like, well, why did you push well, it back? If, if we're going <laughs> with TV titles, then <laughs> the phone has got to be in. No, he doesn't. He's a world pairs champion. He's a so pairs champion. Correct me if I'm wrong. The last year Barney's picked, the words were from Matt Porter, everyone that we've picked won a TV title when Holland won the World Cup. <laughs> no further questions, Your Honour. Cut out. <laughs> um, right. Right. So that we, 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 we have a final four. I want to know who the winner and runner-up of the 2021 Labrooks Masters is, gentlemen. Well, I've got Gavin Price against Glenn Durrett in that first semi-final, and this is, and I think that Gezi comes through it, obviously, um, because you, we all know my love for him. But it will be close. I think it will be eleven nine, eleven ten. Does does not give you the chances, but again, does could easily win that game. But I'll, I'll stick with Gezi, and it's NVG against Snakey. And unfortunately, with Phil Bars, MVG lays down a marker. So we get the dream final that we wanted at the World Championships. Well, for some reason. Michael Van Gerwen against Gerwin Price. And it is a familiar script. Michael Van Gerwen will be the 2021 Labrooks Masters champion. This is a tournament for him to lay down the marker. It is a tournament for him to say, I'm back again. The world was a bit of the, the, the results against us was a fluke. I am still here. I am still the best. Gezi, good luck trying to hold on to your world number one spot, lad. Mark Van Gogh wins this one, and he wins it 11-7. Go. Um, I've got the same winner, basically. Uh, I've got Van Gogh in. I think he beats Gary in the final. Um, what? I I I I can I can stretch. Uh, there is I one support for for Van Gerwen in this, and that's that he wants to lay down a marker to a certain person that currently has his his crown and his title, and it already be on the M4 going west. 
Yeah. yeah. You'd have to look up and see which way that is on the map. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, I think yes, we'll already be on his way home when Van Gerwen goes to the cup collection day. Um, and he'll pick up the first title of the year. Well, this is worrying because we've all got the same winner. I've got Michael Van Gerwen beating Michael Smith in the final. Not again. I feel Not so again. You've literally boy. just killed Michael Smith. You've literally just killed yeah. off Michael Smith. If he loses in another final, yeah. especially if it goes close, Phil, you've literally just ruined his career. Are you happy with yourself? Correct. <laughs> Quote of the day, Phil, you've literally just ruined Michael Smith's career. <laughs> Is it because he was a new kid on the block and you weren't? Uh, To be fair, out of those new kids on the block, the dying ones, two of them were from Andover, funny enough. Jamie Cannon and The Monk. However, they weren't a patch of the You want to be them in that Man United fashion photo from like 2002 in boot-cut jeans and dodgy chains. I'd I'd (laughs) never put a Man United on. (laughs) Um, so everyone, we all have the same winner. We believe that Michael Van Gerwen will be the master. Now, of course, it's that time again, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to bring in Tiz, social media tipster, one of the best in the business. Tiz, thanks for joining us, buddy. How are you up in Yorkshire? Hey, up, guys. How are we doing? Tuned in, ready, and enjoyed the show. You have a bit of banter, don't you, today, lads? Got a bit of banter. That's what we do, and it's what we do. Um, <laughs> over the world, betting wise, how was the action? Was it hot? Yeah, to be honest, mate, I was really impressed. Um, all the football followers that I've got from my football tips, everyone was loving the darts. I managed to get a massive crossover from there. Uh, it was good because we had a good success race, uh, ratio on the darts as well. So I think there's a lot of, lot of, lot of winners. To be honest with you, a lot of happy winners. I think a lot of people were getting behind Gary Anderson. To see him go to the final, I think, was such a big thing for a lot of the casuals. Uh, and obviously, the old faithfuls there as well. Um, but yeah, I think that was a massive thing for the darts tournament. And I think also, Gezi getting to the final, I think it was a good thing. I think it was a really, really good thing for the Brits. Um, so yeah, I think all in all, mate, successful world. So. Gets on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it says looking ahead to the yeah. masters find anything in the outrights that you like value wise or anything like that yeah so I'll come. I'll come back to me outright winner, my favourite, because yeah, we, you've touched upon it, and I'm gonna. I'll go with you guys in a minute. Value wise, Mervyn King for me. I know, Jal, if you've you've sort of gone down a dozen route, but I think fifty to one for Merv at the moment. I mean, he's obviously stated he, he's not done yet. He's not retiring. Do you know what I mean? He, he still thinks he's got some more to go. I think he's had a really good last year, and I think for me, he's got a tough first round. Let's let's, let's not beat about the bush. He's got a very tough first round in Dozer, but from what we've se- from what I've seen of Dozer since the COVID thing, I, it's, he doesn't seem the same player. I think at 50 to 1 there, I think Mervyn King is a potential there. At each way shout, I don't think he's got the worst run to the final. I think his side of a draw and his run to the final, I think 50 to 1 for me could be the value bet of the tournament. I like that. I don't know what you guys are saying with that one. Who's going to, who's yeah. going to shoot no, me down there? I, 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 no, 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 not at all. If like, look, I, 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 for very long either. Totally agree. I think that I, I, I'm, I've said that whoever wins that does of us King match, uh, says will go through to the will go through to at least a semi final, potentially a final. So I'm with you here. Like I look. It, that game between Dozer and King can go either way. They've got, as you say, a, such a nice path to the final where you think, hang on a second. And let's be honest about it. The b- majority of it, right, be honest to themselves, who wouldn't love to see Merv get to another final and potentially get that last spot in the Premier League? I would love it 100%. Go to see Merv every single week. <laughs> He'd love it. The Merverts. Bow down to the King, lads. Do you know what I mean? He's, 
Yeah, but I'll balance Correct. the king. I mean, I, I'm all for it. I think been a massive resurgence from Merv last year. I think he's pr- he's proven that he's not going anywhere. Like he showed some real resilience. I think he's one of the players that's really climatized to the new conditions and he's he's just gone about his game. He's not he's just gone, right? I'm just gonna play my darts. I'm gonna crack on. He's not intimidated by any of the big boys anymore. I think you can see when he's playing against the big boys, he's just there to play darts and he's just gonna go in there. And no matter what happens, the conditions, he's just gonna go and be solid. He's been a consistent performer. I think at the moment, he's a really, I just think he's a solid bet, to be honest with you. I think 50 to 1 is a massive price. Um, and I think if he gets for that dozen 1, that's, a, that's the easiest run he can get, to be honest with you. This is a tough, this is a really tough tournament. I mean, you've gone through the first round games there. I've got an, I've got an app which I was going to give you guys in a minute, but as far as the tournament goes, them first round fixtures, there's, there's some really, really tough ties in there. They're, they're all, there's no, there's no gimme, let's put it that way. No gimmies at all. Any others in the outrights that you like? Right, this is... I didn't want this to happen because you all agreed, but MVG, oh, I didn't want to do it. I really didn't want to do it. I was looking at it, I was thinking, Gezi, I really like Gezi. After the world, obviously, I'm on the Gezi bandwagon. I'm thinking the hype, the Gezi thing, yeah, it's there. Phil, you've touched upon it. Like, <laughs> has he? How much darts has he played since the Worlds? You just don't know. MVG, when I'm looking at that side of a draw, I'm going, oh. Yeah, I've been I've been reeled in. I've been reeled in. I think MVG. I think it could. I think there's a a good shout at the MVG price final. To be honest with you, uh, I think MVG. To be honest, if I was going to go to an outright win winner, I think top. MVG is the one. Yeah, Five uh, to two for unfortunately, MVG's he's a favourite. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, he's but a favourite. I mean, MVG terms value. At five to two. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I mean, tomorrow, I was looking at Gary Anderson. I was speaking to you earlier about this, Phil. So Gary Anderson's fourteen to one. Now after the worlds he's just had, you go, that could be a shout. The problem I've got is the fact that he runs into to Gezi, um, and I just don't know if there's a thing there. There's a stigma when Gary comes up against Gezi, and that's what stopped me from backing it. I thought I looked at it and I thought fourteen to one. You, I like the price, but it, it, he runs into Gezi fairly quick, so. I just don't know if he, I just don't know if there is a mental block there when it comes to, to Gezi. So, yeah, unfortunately, I was. Uh, I think MVG was the one that swayed it out of the big boys for me. So, your Acker, what have you got for us, then, buddy? We know we know you love love an Acker. So, what have you got? Yeah. So, what I've gone with, I've just gone four wins in the first round. Fairly easy for you guys to get on. Uh, so, I touched upon him. Mervyn King then is going to be the first one in there. He's against Glenn Durant. He's a marginal outsider. He's evens against Duzzer. So I'm going to take him on there, as for reasons explained before. Next one in there uh, is I'm going to go with Dimmy to beat Dobes. Now, you've said, obviously, Phil, he's going to wait probably till after the tournament for the Neop. Uh, whether or not that will affect things, we don't know. But I think Dimmy, I, I think he's got enough to outscore Dobes and get his doubles in. I think I think he should come through that one. You were all in agreement earlier. It's a massive game, this one, for both players. Michael Smith, A.D. Lewis. I'm not going to go against you guys. I'm totally with you. I think that Michael Smith is going to come through that one. I think, yeah, I just think that the quality is probably there with Michael at this moment in time. I've not seen enough from A.D. for a little bit now to suggest that we could see an A.D. Lewis resurgence, unfortunately. As sad as it is, I'd love to see the jackpot get back to the heights that he was. But I just I can't see it right now. Uh, and the last one is going to be Daryl Gurney versus Deswan. I'm going to go with Gurney. Um, before the Worlds, I would not have touched this one with a barge pole, to be honest with you. I would have gone nowhere near it. Um, what I saw in the Worlds, I saw a different side. Of, I saw a different Gurney, the old Gurney. Um, I'm hoping that we can get back to that super chin before. Uh, and I think if he can play like he played in the Worlds, I think his confidence will carry through to this game. And I think that is that's the way to go with this one. Uh, for me, they're the four bets that I've gone with this week, and you can get them priced up at eleven to two. Ooh, I like that. Good price. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad price. Yeah. Any anyone good? Anyone got any worries there? Anyone going to disagree with any of the bets? I think the obvious one is going to be the. I think the hardest one there is the Moon King. The one I think that's for me. That's the trickiest of the lot. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah. But I think that 
Yeah, I'm, I, no, sorry, Phil. I, I, I'm with you. I think that it is the. Most, I think that there's that's the only one really on that one for me, um, as you talked about. But eleven to two is not a bad price. I, I, I can't say disagree with it. I've actually just gone through the selections that I've made with the title sponsors of the uh, of the Masters, uh, as you can see on the left hand screen there. And I've got 126 to one for my, all my <laughs> from all my actors. In fact, actually. What I amazed that is the fact that Clayton is higher. Sorry, Clayton's odds are longer than D'Souza at the moment in time, which I find astonishing, really, especially after Clayton beat him at the at the, at the European Championships not long ago. Yeah, Clayton's a massive price. I mean, I'm looking at Bet365, 125 to 1. I mean, the different bookers obviously have different prices, but I'm looking at some massive prices. I mean, I said to Phil even earlier that Bunting at 100 to 1 after the worlds that he's just had. I mean, he looks that's as good as I've seen Bunting play for a, a little while now uh, in the Worlds. And if he can carry on that sort of form, 100 to 1 for Bunting, obviously, again, we know he's not got an easy tie. We know he's got Cullen first straight in. He's, he's thrown right in the deep end. But 100 to 1 is big odds. If he, if he can find that sort of form that he played there, I, you can never write Bunting off at 100 to 1. No, I completely agree. You have to go through. He wouldn't have to go through PG to the final. Yeah, it's, it's, don't get me wrong. An absolutely horrible run, but I think again, he, he was just another one of them players that had us. For me, I'd class it as a successful Wills for Bunting. He might disagree. He might think to a final should have won it, but I think for me that was, that was a good showing for him in the world. So a bit of confidence as well, and 100 to one. It's it's one of them there. It's a, it's a temp, so let's put it that way. It is. Again, just, just talking about all, all things as well. Have you seen a bit of a swing in the darts betting as well? Because the football's been unpredictable with, with no fans where, where the darts hasn't been. Oh, massively. So, as you know, Phil, I run a betting community myself. Um, my darts tips were probably the most successful over the Christmas period. They were better than my football. They were better than my horse racing. Um, with that was an influx of people messaging me for the darts bets. Um, and I found now more people are asking me, when's the next darts bets? When's the next darts bets? As you guys know, it's been a quiet period. So I've had to sort of like tell people, just calm down. It's coming. It's coming back. Um, but there's definitely so many more people now after that. I think the whole lockdown scenario, and I think having sport on TV has been a, it's been a saving grace for many people. And I think the darts was probably as much of a saving grace for football over the Christmas period because it, it was really good. The coverage was great, despite all the well, obviously the tricky conditions that they had to deal with. I think the coverage was excellent. I think you guys like yourself on social media gave it a good platform, promoted it really well. Uh, the bookies, to be fair to them, the bookies were great. They did some really good promotions over it, uh, which which were I was able to exploit, and a lot of the people that I was pushing to we were able to take advantage of as well. Um, there was a lot of sort of boost dots on the big occasions and a lot of them were winners as well. Uh, I know there's some massive ones in the final. I tipped a seven to one winner for my followers, which is a double odds boost on Sky Bet. A lot of people were on that. Um, I think the biggest thing with it is the bookies are now kind of aligned more with the promoters and stuff like that and the events, they're getting more behind it. I think what we're seeing now is the bookies are starting to take it a bit more seriously, uh, which must be coming from the followers. There must be more people putting bets on the darts. So I think, I've, yeah, I think it's going it's going in the right direction. I think you're getting better value now uh, as a punter than you've ever had it, had it before because the bookies are taking it more seriously as a sporting event. It is an absolute pleasure having you on, buddy. Thank you very much for all your betting input. As always, mate. Cheers, cheers. Much appreciate the time. Pleasure as always, boys. Enjoy yourselves. I'll tune to the rest of the show. Thanks, lads. Cheers, cheers. cheers. Take care, mate. See you soon. Well, everyone, thank you very much for tears as always for jumping on. Right, I think we've done everything in the Masters that needs to be done, gents. We haven't missed anything, have we? Well, no, not really. Well, 15 we... minutes. And also as well, we That's talked about fun. a tournament that really, yeah, but also we've done, we, we talked about a tournament that doesn't really need talking about as much as we have done. But there we go. We in all know, we all know my thoughts on the past. Because of the carrot dangling over with 
the P word. No. We don't have a choice. Yeah. There is, there is, yeah, whether, you, but... whether you like it or not, there is more excitement around this Masters than there has been for any Masters in the last decade. Which, I, yes, but... Plus there's that... no Champions League. Plus the UK Open and the Premier League are being pushed back. All right, I would prefer this two weeks. Uh, more, UK Open's Arsenal not being pushed back. Right, not well, UK has not been pushed back. I prefer this a couple of weeks later with a couple of pro tours before and then actually go, right, this is the first TV event of the year. But this is where the calendar is. Embrace it. Get used to covering darts for the event you don't like. And then you can sit there for 10 days and, and cover Q score. Off Dart Connect. Oh, mate, and then I'm you'll st- be berating the fact we haven't got Chris Mason and Jackie Oatley telling us what's what on the telly box. So but look. Look, let's not let 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 let's not let's not talk about uh, the the way of ITV coverage. We all know I love I, we all know I love the way that ITV cover darts. We know that, but and hey, I would much rather watch Dark Connect and follow Q School than follow the Masters. Are <laughs> we brutally honest about this? Um, right, just a couple from the chat room before we move on. Baz, which refs are doing the Masters? Um, I don't know. I know George is because I was on the phone today. But other than that, not a clue, mate. Um, big Georgie Nobes. Big, the Nobes. Big, big, big George. Part He's of the back. family now he is. Yeah. Well, exactly. Um, and there was one about the calendar. When's it being released? Look, I think that for the calendar, Q School needs to happen. So as soon as we know 100% Q School is happening, because look, the government could change the, the, the sporting stuff and all that. So once Q score is done, I think we will have a, a cal- or some sort of calendar released of pro tours at, at least. So because it's been well documented, guys, that if Q school were to fall and not happen, darts is done until Q score is done. No, no darts can happen until Q score has happened. So there's no point then releasing anything and then going, ah, oh, balls, we've got to scrap it all. So that that's the reason for the silence on the calendar. And to be fair, I think the PTC have done a great job on this. Mm-hmm. But they've, they've done, this, they've done the honest, job that they've had. The first couple of months anyway, we're not the fans aren't going to be in there. So it's all right. The only people that actually need to know when it's on are us folk who are going to sit there and cover it for you. Other than that, you just tune in in your evenings or your weekends and, and watch it instead of the absolute abomination of having to watch that I call my football team at the minute. <laughs> right. I wasn't going to bring it's that up. Very, but, uh... It's been very topical. Now, we will do a special show all on Q School, but we've had kind of time to digest the runners and the, the riders of, of Q School. So, and in the comments as well, get involved in this. I want names three people who you think will win tour cards at 2021 Q School, gentlemen. Sheesh. Can they be Sheesh. can they be across the can they go can they go across the board? As in like can we pick two from one and one from another or you know you know what I mean in terms of UK and European? Okay. We'll, get, we'll, we'll change the rules slightly. You can have two from the UK and two from Europe. Okay. All right. I can't even well, list. well, I've got I've got it up on PDC TV. Gob, if you want to go on there, go in the news section and go from there, or or follow us, or go to onlinedarts.com, and uh, you'll get the list there. I'm about to say, is it? Oh, what is it? I, 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 do you know what? Because of the, everything that's been going on, PB, I didn't even realise that you put the, this live. Oh, oh no, I don't know. I can't know every one of those names. Did you really? I bet. Um, yes, right. In the same order as other Thanks. sites. But... <laughs> Possibly couldn't comment <laughs> on that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So here's the deal. If this was a normal year, I would be backing all three of the North American lot to be play- to be playing on the PDC tour card, the PDC tour next year. I'd be backing Baggish, Lowby, and Campbell, all three of them, to get cards. As far as I'm aware, 
Matt Campbell is definitely coming, isn't he? I don't know about I know about Baggish because he's tested positive for COVID. Danny Baggish, unfortunately, we wish him all the best. And I don't know whether Danny Lowe is over here yet or not. Are, are, they, are they definitely all coming? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm definitely, definitely gonna say Matt Campbell. I think he's absolutely superb, and I think that he will have a lot to do, a lot of time to, do, a lot of say on the tour for a number of years when he when he wins his tour card. I really, I really do. Next, my next pick. I'm not going to say Baggish and Lorby because you know we know that I, I, I like them and I think that they will do well. But I think Scott Mitchell, his time is now. And I think, obviously, he's, he's, he's picked it up from, from there. Um, he's, he's picked it up from the Challenge Tour, and he's done really well. And I think this is his time, and I think he'll, he'll, he'll get a tour card. So my two to watch, really, Matt Campbell and Scott Mitchell. Appreciate sure that's not necessarily the most um, outsider picks, but, you know, we, we have to try and be as, as honest at this point as well. I'm looking forward to seeing a European tour card school. Alex Moore's actually said the name that I'm thinking of in the chat room right now. Thibaut Tricol from France. I'm really excited because he had a fantastic Q school last year. And I think he's going to have another one. I'm really excited to see him. I think he'll do some bit. I think he'll be, I think he'll be really, really do some bits. And I will hold fire on one because I know on a, on a young German that I will wait until, and I'll let Barty have that pick because I know he wants to have that pick. <laughs> um, but you know what, Gob, you introduced me to this man back at the World Cup properly. The Greek god himself will regain his tour card. John Michael, what a hero. So those are my those are my two to watch for the European Q school, uh, European Q school. Thibaut Chicole and John Michael, and the UK side. I'll go with Matt Campbell uh, and Scott Mitchell. Drop. Don't care. Dyson Parody is not allowed to take part, and I'm fuming. That's a fair point. <laughs> the fair point. My, we my need, the world needs more opinion. Dyson Parody last weekend and it was superb and I'm very much in love with the man and the fact that he can't travel is an absolute travesty. That being said, but anyway, I suppose I'll have to pick someone on the fence on this show. Um, I mean, there's plenty of ex tour card players or, or big names in the field. Still scrolling through. Don't fancy any of them. Um, I mean, Jar's just nicked my picks. To be fair, Campbell and Mitchell were the two that I was going to go for, which completely ah, threw. Sorry, me mate. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, who do I fancy from this list? Darren Johnson to win his card back, maybe. Um, where's he gone? Is he in this list or is he... Louis Williams. Louis Williams is one. I really fancy after his run at the UK Open of the year. Marked him at county level previously. Very, very good talent. I think he's playing very, very well as well. As is... I can't think if his surname begins with an L or if it begins with an N. I don't want to get it wrong. So let me just keep scrolling. Wrong well, list. Why do you do that? I'll just say this about the... I'll, I'll just say this really quickly about Louis Williams. He played so well at the UK Open when he was playing there as a Riley's qualifier. And I think you're right. He's, 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 only, he's still a young lad, isn't he? He's only about 16, 17. Mm-hmm. Uh, uni yeah. student, so he's early 20 now, I think. Fair. Well, who's, who, are you trying, who are you thinking of? One of the target boys, Luke Littler. I think his I say so now. But he is not old enough in to play. play. He's not old enough to play. He's not old enough to play. I know he won an online competition in which the last four was him, Robert Rockwood, 
Um, he might be, but when he was runner up in the JDC to King. And one other. I'm not quite sure how old he is. He might not be able to play. Yeah. So that would make sense. That'd be why I can't see him on this list. Um, I will go with Richard Knorr to win his tour card back. <laughs> oh, <come> on, <laughs> Safe, solid one. Hey, he put on his Twitter the other day that in four years' time he'd have won a TV event. So you can't do that if you haven't got a tour card. So I'm, I'm going naughty because he's can entertain in a good valley for money while he's there as well. So he's entertaining. I'll give you that. Yeah. Uh, European uh, Barney is an absolute obvious, and I'm going to have him. I just think the standard of the Q school means that he's going to come through. Said it from he's the start. not going to win um, his tour card. I would happily take. I will happily take any bet on right now. I will happily take any bet on right now that Rain Van Barneveld does not win his card back. Twenty quid. Oh. Twenty quid. All right, done. Virtual handshake because you can't do that anymore. <laughs> One of us should have gone with opposite hand. Really, to look better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I am going. I mean, I like the look of Schindler. We've seen he's done a bit of work on the action. Uh, Neil Zonneveld is probably one of the unluckiest players to be in this situation. I think without COVID, he'd still have his tour card. I just think he's got a chance. Uh, but I like the look of Damian Moult, another one of the youngsters. Um, thought he had a great year last year. I'll, I'll back him to come through. And one more, I completely forgot. Franz Roach, we've been on about him for weeks. He's in the event. He played absolutely yes. brilliant at the European event earlier in the year. If he turns up the way he did in that European event, picks up a tour card at a stroll. Agreed. I think you're right there. Roach was absolutely outstanding. But I've got a funny feeling, God, that that's not the German that I was talking about with Philip Bars. Uh, it's not blonde enough. Anyway. Yes. European. European. I agree. Look, Nico Kurtz, everyone knows where I'm going with this one. That's the easy one. Kurtz wins on day one, gets his tour card job done. Um, and like Gob, I've, I've been impressed with Schindler. Back end of the year, he he done some a lot of hard work and played some good stuff on the home tour. Was unlucky not to qualify for the Worlds. So, I'm going there. The UK one, you boys have already said some some great names. There's, I've, got, I've got four here I'm looking at, where two of them are in... They are outsiders, believe me. And I'm probably going off what I saw them playing online. One's Justin Smith, and the other yeah. is Jason Askew. Now, during the motor mm-hmm. stuff, those two boys mm-hmm. played some absolute tremendous stuff. I'm not sure how much they've played since or or anything like that, but I remember Jason Askew winning four legs on a row going 12, 11, 12, 12, or something stupid like that. So bundles of ability, the same as, as Justin Smith. So I think outsiders, I quite like those two. From the pick of the established players, shall we say? Ready, ready. Pop. I've got one of these for him already. I'm going monkey all day long. Wow. I'm not even hiding it. Monkey. I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going mon- monkey all day long. And yeah. the other and one I'm going palace. for. Queen of the Palace. Uh, we know I'm it, Phil. Not... We know it. No, no. That's, in fact, no. I wasn't going fan. No, I think she will. But I think there's value at this one at three to one. Cameron Menzies. Because on any given day shout, he could turn up. On any given day, he could turn up and go absolutely nuts. Depends how much Do you know what? Do tell before he gets down there. <laughs> do you know do you know what? He's the only he wasn't he was it uh was it nineteen? Well, yes, it was. There were two undefeated players at the UK Open in 2019, Nathan Aspel and Cameron Benzies, because Benzies didn't know where he was going second round. 
to be fair, I have great sympathy for him there because anyone that's been to the UK Open behind the scenes, yes. if you're on the TV board, you get treated like royalty and it is exactly the same as any other tournament where you get marshaled around and everything like that. If you're not on that TV board, it is an absolute minefield. So I oh, felt nice for Cameron. Nice play the worst too. I got lost heading to the back of stage too. How on earth the players get into the back of um, the multi board room is beyond me. Yeah, yeah. It, exactly. Agreed. So yeah, that, that, that's fine. And who wouldn't love to see Cameron Menzies for two years on tour? I can't argue with He's that. Liver, probably. He'd be brilliant. Um, and and that? everyone's saying that there's, 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 and everyone <laughs> going, there's no bar, but technically. The players will have alcohol at Q School, believe me. <laughs> uh, don't don't they? Um, they don't drink, Philip. You know that. So, to be fair, some of them don't. Look, but the ones that do, they will. They will have enough. Don't worry. Serious, uh, serious point though. Jamie Drummer makes, and this is a very serious point. If Fallon and RVB both get a tour card, how will Sky do decide who to put in the Premier League? That is a very, Not very paid. good question. Yeah, I, I'm with you. That's a very good question. Well. If Wade wins the Masters too. Well, if Wade wins the Masters, and then to get a tour card, he ain't got a bloody open else chance. <laughs> Let's not take the piss here. <laughs> I mean, there are some things that could happen in life, but if both RBB and Fallon get a tour card, no. Nah. <laughs> Um, right, everyone, we are going to come on to questions very, very shortly, but we're going to have a few other bits. Remember, the Online Darts Fans Choice Awards vote will close at 5 o'clock on Friday, ladies and gentlemen. We will put another tweet out after the show with the link and everything like that. Amazing number of votes. I have to say thank you for everyone that has taken part so far. An unbelievable um, number of votes. We will once that is done, it probably won't be this. The it won't probably won't be the live lounge after the Masters. It will be the live lounge after that, because obviously we need to get the votes in, count them all, and then get ready to do the show. But there won't be time directly after the Masters. But we will have a full awards show, ladies and gentlemen. We're working on something a little bit quirky, and can we do it under the current circumstances and everything like that? But it's going to be good, that's for sure. So please, if you haven't voted yet, suit and tie get them in. That. Suit and tie for that. You know. <laughs> and that was before lockdown made me fatter. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, you can't. It's the biggest independent darts awards out there. The online darts fans choice there's awards. Only, there's only me. So many work teams calls I can sit on with a Nike t shirt and not get slandered for. <laughs> <laughs> but look, but yeah, no, and that's mate, you've got to put, you got to put your suit and tie on. As I say, it, it's, I've got to say, it's the big, it's the biggest, uh, it's the biggest independent online darts, you know, biggest independent media award of the lot to get voted yeah, by uh, our great uh, fans and listeners. Uh, we've had over a thousand votes so far, ladies and gentlemen, an absolute unbelievable. Thank you, guys. For, for for little old online darts, you lot have um, you lot have been doing it all there. Thank um, you, guys. We really do appreciate more. it. Yeah, hundred percent, ladies and gentlemen. Right, it's that time. We're gonna throw the chat room open to you all. You know it makes sense. We will answer your questions, ladies and gentlemen. We won't hide. We won't. Shirk responsibility, we will answer it as best as we can. So get them in while they're coming in, guys. What do we all think for the UK Open? I know it's been touched about. Mace pretty much said it without saying it. MK behind closed doors in original dates. It's like the it's like being back at the recut. Uh, it's like being back at the rebark. Back to those days. Remember then? Back in June when Sky covered the UK Open. We'll have eight stages around the whole thing. It'll be quite good. Can't wait. I genuinely don't remember that. It was before I started. No, honestly. 
Um, no, honestly, three Reebok, the, the, Reebok was mint. Yeah, God, God, PB. Oh, the, the the Reebok was was mint. It was just all in one room. Get on with it, and it was it was unbelievable. Um, and no, no, um, no. What's it called? Was it? There was no uh, chase the sun whenever the players went off for a break on the TV board. No, because obviously stage two was still on. You had the boards across the back all going on. It was. <laughs> It was just Look, don't, don't get don't get me wrong on this one when I say that anybody who has booked for the UK Open and has ever done a UK Open before, it is the best tournament at Minehead because you literally can just go from board to room to room. It, it is great, but there was something special about the Reebok for me. In the same way, though, right? In the same way that the, that it was special when the, when the world's is at the Circus Tavern. Yeah, no, look, don't get me wrong, I like Butlins, but it's too big to try and cover. Where, when you're at the Reebok, oh. you could get to board to board quickly. Where, if something's going also, on... But, yeah, but remember though, Phil, now the three of us there, one of us can go and sit, you can, you can go and sit in your lovely little main stage, backstage little area... Gob can go and have a little chin wagging reds or go upstairs to the multi-board room and I'll swap with him. You could sit there in your nice little... Nice little chat room there in, in, the, in the back end of the main stage in the fantastic crazy horse. Well, you know, it's what we do. <laughs> Absolutely. I know the multi board room, and I'm, I'm sure people that, if anyone in the, in the chat room has ever been, please tell me this one right that the multi board room for me is one of my be- is one of the best rooms I've ever been in. Just that, that sheer buzz of constant activity in the afternoon in particular. Just incredible. Incredible. Yeah, look, 100%. Uh, right, Andrew's here. Do you think the UK Open will go ahead behind closed doors? Uh, 100%. Yes. I think I think it's nailed on. As, as long as Q School happens, that the UK Open will be in said dates. And that will be an interesting one, though, mm-hmm. this year, I think, Andrew, because if the, if the UK Open doesn't go... If the UK Open goes ahead with its normal dates and Q School and all that, most of the players, unless they put in a block of five pro source most of the players that'll be the first time they've played all year and that'll be quite I interesting soon, I think as soon as Q score's done we'll have a spring tour I think we'll see a block yeah. of five appear quite quickly I, and, I, and that would be either played at MK or at the Rico and the, they'll, they'll yeah. use it as a build up for the UK 100% yeah 100%, 100% yeah I'm with you on there uh, Dave Who's the best progressed player last year? Oh, good question. That's Who do I think progressed question. the best last yeah. year? Dirk. Yeah. Matt Dive and Boda. He deserves yeah. to be in the Premier League for me. Eight he eight deserves eight. that tenth. Uh, Dirk deserves to be in the Premier League for me. Another one, big shout. Hetter. David Hetter as well. I think the pair of, I think the pair of them had yeah. really good years. Um, so, yeah. And that, also, that and also... Jump on the questions when you're looking, guys, as well. Don't feel that I have to read them all out. If you like one, jump in. Oh, no, no. Uh, you, you said this about, we've talked about this now about drinking. Uh, we'll come on to that in a second. Martin says, remember when you could choose your board to watch on Sky where in regards to the UK Open? Oh, my God, what a magical time that was. Where you could actually watch all eight the boards. Red the, the red button. The Sky, Sky Sports Extra on the red button. Now we're talking, everybody. Um, oh. Talking about talk about drinking and all that sort of stuff, though, because oh, we have touched on it tonight. So let's not, as you said, not sort of shy away from it. Um, I know you touched on this a little bit, and not sure how much you can say, but have you noticed the shift towards younger players, especially being fitter and drinking less? Um, and then he says, and have the older players started to change over the last ten years? Also, look, okay, so here's the deal on this one. We know, look, everybody, talk, let's not try and hide it. Darts players have a drink. Let's not let me, let's not try and hide it. Like, come on now, all right? God, don't don't look at me like this. Don't look at me like that. We we hand over your face. Dutch <laughs> players have a drink. There's no doubt about that, right? But no I do think. That, <laughs> but I do think, and Phil, correct me if I'm wrong on this. But when I say this, right? Do you think that players have stopped drinking as much now because they've seen the likes of Gezi? <laughs> Who doesn't really drink that much? 
hundred percent. No, I'm saying no. No, no, I, I, I think at the top level there has been a huge swing that you are seeing the younger lot come through that don't drink. The likes of Dobes oh, doesn't drink. No way. Yeah, I, I think hey, they're not young enough for me. I'm, I'm looking at the development tour and <laughs> they ship more alcohol there than they do the pro tour. I, I, yeah, I, but that's I, the I, I think that they. 350 a pint is not a bad value either, but... Yeah, but, God, you have to remember that... There are a few that have been doing this for long enough that they now need to focus on health rather than anything else, so they may have cut back a little, but in terms of the quality of some of the interviews we've had, in terms of looking at some (laughs) of the players on stage and their up-and-down performances... um, Yeah. And being in and around the environment like we have been, feel you're kidding yourself. Uh, I no, think there has I, been a I, I, I really do. I think there has been. I'm not. I'm I not do. suggesting it's a drastic change. I'm not. Suge- I'm not suggesting that it's completely shifted the other way and that nobody drinks anymore. But let me just say this as well, Gob, on the dev, that on the dev. The, would you say that the majority of people have aspirations to play at the top level, or do you think that they can make the top level? I don't think. I think there's a bit of a gap, isn't there, in the dev tour, where probably you got about thirty-two to thirty-five players that might eventually make it off the dev tour. You, I mean, you know it better than I do, mate. From past experience, when I've been there, anybody that's then held a tour card. Or literally, the minute they turn eighteen, I don't recall anybody in the top thirty-two of the Dev Tour Order of Merit not drinking. And uh, also, quick one: Alex Moore says, uh, "Always wondered if there's so many breaks in TV tournaments that the players can race off for a quick beer slash wine mid-game." Uh, from what I've seen, no, they don't normally. No, it's purely, it's- it's purely down to TV advertising that ITV have to have X amount of breaks, which is why same with Sky. There's stupidly a, there's stupidly a break in a best of eleven game, which irritates the hell out of me. No need, ridiculous, absolutely no need. Um, we've got one from Mark here. Best nickname in darts. Mine. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a good question. That's a good question. Best thing. I quite like I, I quite like Ryan Murray personally. I quite like Muz Lightyear because I'm a massive Toy Story fan. Evil Charlie. Evil Charlie's funny. Carol. Yeah. Big Carol. Um, I st- I'm, 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 I'm still old school. I still like the asset. Yeah. I mean, I, if we're going old school, then I absolutely love Hawaii Five O One. I think it's absolutely incredible, and coming out to Hawaii, coming out to Hawaii Five O is inc- amazing. That walk on at the at walk on at the O Eight Worlds still does it for me every time. I tell you what, speaking of that, I would love someone to walk out to the eighteen theme tune. Please, how good Mr. would that T? be? You know who you got to call. Da, 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 da. <laughs> exactly right. Um, one uh, here says, as number one, Price should be challenging for first position in the Premier League next year. If he's not and only trying to scrape into the top four, does that mean his ranking is false and only one because MVG lost a form? Well, <laughs> okay. So here's my here's my thoughts on this. MVG had an absolutely god awful 2020 this is probably the it's probably the worst year of his professional career since the grand prix in 2012 would you agree with Barzi? yeah 100 percent. right 100%. so just because an mvg loses that aura you've got to go and pick yourself up on it price as we all know doesn't like the premier league he i don't think he's ever finished in the top four has he in the prem no nope so he, he, i don't think he particularly likes the format of the league, but I think he's now starting to get, he's now starting to really understand the crowd, that, that, that pantomime villain kind of role. But I think as well, the crowd's starting to turn for him. You listen to him back in Wolvo, in the slam final in particular, same with the, if whenever they go to, whenever we go to Minehead, whenever we go to Minehead, 
oh, is half the crowd. Exactly. So yeah. I think that I think this year, now that he's managed to go and um, do the breakthrough, he's got the world championship underneath. Just if he doesn't if he doesn't top the league phase, it's not a bad thing because. Yes, you get an extra 25 grand for it, but in reality, it don't mean jack shit if you don't go and win it on the night. That's that's the thing. And plus, you know, and, and plus it's over 16 weeks. It's a long You're not going to be on it for 16 weeks. Exactly. You, you don't win the Premier League in the first month, first two months. You've got to be in and around and time it right. A bit like, again, and I'm going to use same- his name here, but Barney, the yeah. year that he was just avoided relegation, but then won, was it five out of six? And yes. made four spot. So, look, you can't win the Premier League in the first two months. And you look at this as well, right? Does it? Okay. You think about this, is a bit different, but does it was pretty much on it from the, the word go? It, certainly in that first block of, certainly in the first block before Exeter and Liverpool, and then in that first week yeah. to ground off the first time for judgment night. Second half of the league, would we agree he dropped off a little bit? Would we agree there? I think once, I think once second his half top four place position worth my time as the Masters. I think once oh. he uh, finished top or his top four was guaranteed, yes, it, it did a little bit. So, like I say, then on the night, he did enough to get over the line against Gary and then he eventually broke Lathan Aspinall. You don't win. It doesn't matter if you win the to- if you if you win and, and are top of the league, because you need to have that great night. You need to be it on the night, and that's what MVG does so normally does so well. I'm, I'm I'm quite excited for this Premier League actually in a way because the top three in the world should really, in my opinion, they're that far ahead of the rest of the field. Maybe not necessarily now with Gary, but. That those four should should really not necessarily walk it, but comfortably make the top four unless something ridiculous happens. One from Sam here asking, "Have we seen Nathan Aspinall's new modified darts?" No, I haven't. Yeah, looking forward to seeing them. To be fair, I've on seen the ones Saturday. that have been released to Argos, but I don't think they're his playing ones. No, they're not. Um, no, <laughs> um, no, but I am looking forward to. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them. Um, to be fair, um, we've done that one. Yeah, remember very quickly as well. We've done that one. I'm about to say, we need to uh, come out and say, do you think the winners of the PDC awards will be a reflection of the of our awards? Potentially, I don't know. I mean, I'd be very surprised if Gary mm-hmm. Price doesn't win Player of the Year. Um, but we'll have to see what happens on that one. Um, did someone say? Did someone ask about? What's? Well, I'm just saying. I'm very saying. I'm just saying now. <laughs> Uh, did, did someone ask about uh, best walk on in the uh, best walk on we've seen room? live? Best walk on witness. Ooh, live who's that from Martin? Who said that one, mate? Martin Thompson. Best walk on witness live for me. It was Taylor at the match play when he won, or Hendo at the first Premier League. Ooh. this list is um. long. It is for you. Very you've been long. At every bloody event. My list is quite narrow. Because whether, whether you love the, him or not, the first Barney walk on at Rotterdam was ridiculous. Special. The final one and was as last, well, to be fair. Well, to be fair, it, the, his last one at Amsterdam in the World Series final was unbelievable as well. Um, Taylor's. Taylor's, Taylor's walk on in the twenty. Taylor's uh, final one at final one. one. I, for me, his final yeah. walk on at Blackpool was better than his final one at the Worlds. Yeah, I think for me, the best, Blackpool the best, w- patch, the, yeah, best walk on. I think Hendo at Aberdeen comes to mind as well. Yeah, the, the first one. The second yeah, one was a letdown. Second one, second one. Second one was the first time we ever saw Dirk on the Euro Tour come down the stairs to the chainsaw. Yep. Yeah, that's, um, that's William, not a bad William, one. William O'Connor at Dublin. That was special. Uh, over and in Matt says, uh, who was the plank that came onto Westlife at the Worlds? There will be no Westlife slander here. 
Get out. <laughs> um, Uncle, what, Uncle you know, Sam coming out. Was it, was it, uh, no, it wasn't Uncle Mike Sam, was it? It was Dijon, wasn't it? What is going on? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tell you what, was it Dijon? Was it was it was it Di Zhuang who came best... out to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one of the weirdest walk-ons ever was Noel Malik them coming on to Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, I mean, yeah, that that was <laughs> great. That um, no, that was um, agreed. Um, Christoph Rosiski, I'm sure he came out to muffins. <laughs> that's that's a great walk-on. Um, actually, do you know what? Yeah, Best walk I've ever seen in life. Sod it. I'll go with I'll, I'll go with Mardle at the at the World Championships in 08, the night he beat Taylor. I thought that was an I thought it was epic. I, I've got a lot of time for that, really. Yeah, that was good. Um, one for here from Andrew. Who else um, has new darts at the Masters apart from Andrew? We've already talked about it. So Aspinall, we have has already said he has new equipment. Whether Michael uses new equipment or not, I'm not sure yet. I'm trying to find out, but he has been practicing with new equipment. Does a. No, he could have told me that before all three of us backed in for the event. Look, I, 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 think he, <laughs> I, think, I think he will revert to old faithfuls, but there is some tinkering going on. I, I think he will use old Philip, faithfuls. You're killing me tonight. <laughs> Um, Daza has been tinkering with, with new equipment. Um, who else? Gezi has been tinkering with a different colour dart. Oh, one of the five sets Prince... they released last year that are virtually the same as his actual set. Yeah. Um, Prince of Principle the same, but he's been tinkering with, with other stuff. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're the ones that I know. Here's one actually. JB's come out with saying, "What's the worst walk-on song currently?" I look. We all know my thoughts on. This. There's plenty of them. I think there's 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 there's, there's probably about three or four. Um, Sam Carter, Glenn Dunn coming out to Angels to shock it. Get out. Um, that's the first thing. You going with um, you? I tell you what, the worst. Yeah, walk-on that's, is. A, oh, that's, really a, that's a that's a that's a belter. But um, right. Um. Where's if you're going to get song? a new there's, walk on there's... song, if you're going to get a new walk on song commissioned, please make it better than the one he had. Chris Dobie's new one. Who was that? Oh, Dobie. Yeah, no, one, one, great. Um, yeah. If you're going to get one commissioned for him, um, get something that gets the crowd going. I'll tell you one that I don't like because it's just overplayed and I hate it for that reason. It's sweet. Um, it's, it's chins. Sweet Caroline. It just no, does my head. It does does it? But the problem with it. Is Gurney doesn't know the bloody words. You've got one of the best walk on songs, the best crowd pleasers in the world, and you're like, <laughs> that's a gif. Someone please make that a gif right now. <laughs> there's three that there's three that comes to mind when it comes to the walk ons. Shut up and dance by Walk the Moon. That needs to go. No, I'm sorry, no, Bully. No, it needs to go. No, no. I'm sorry. No, where's the mute button? It needs to go. No, where's the mute button? It needs button? to go. No. Christoph Ratajski. Ratajski. Ratajski's whatever you want. That needs to go. That's garbage. He walked on to Venga Boys six months ago. Ratajski hasn't settled yet. You can't call out Ratajski. Oh, he's back to the Venga Boys. Oh, is it back on? Oh, is it back on? Oh, he's back to the Venga Boys. Oh, okay, fair. Um, Rob Cross. He will. That be. needs to go. Get, get back. Get back. Get back to danger, danger, high voltage rather than uh, hot, hot, hot. That needs to go. But yeah, I, I've always, I don't know what it is about walk on, but so says, what would my walk on be? Uh, it would definitely be S Club 7, Reach. There's no doubt about that. 100%. Shocking. See, I've, I've got a choice of two and I can't decide which one. When I played County Youth back in the day, I, I used both of them. I, I, I couldn't decide which one. So I, I, I used both of them. I used the rotator. Which one of them? PJ and Duncan, let's get ready to rumble. Good. Big fan. Big fan. Chesney Hawks, the one and only. Good. Do you know what? I've also used that. Good. I've used that once. Yeah. And throwing it out that there, once. when I look back now, I can't believe no one has a bust out Rick Astley. 
No, I agree with that. I can't believe that. That would be good. That, that would be good be to get in there. Or, or the Gladiators. Or the Gladiators theme. Why not? Yeah. So I've used um, a couple. I used Kanye West Power once. Got beat in that quarterfinal, yeah. so retired that one straight away. I used Chesney <laughs> once. I used... I'll be honest, I pinched DJ Otzi Hey Baby from Tony O'Shea uh, for university. It just gets the crowd going, and instead of singing Hey Baby, they sang Hey Gobby, and it just got in everyone else's head. Uh, but my go-to is five, everybody get up. There's a drum drop right at the job. start. The big bass line, it's unbelievable. I yeah, even had it edited, like, right? Like this that. is how sad it was. At uni for varsity, I had it edited... So it started with the IPL fanfare horn, played the first drum <laughs> drop, haha, dropped into it, and then instead of going into the first verse, it went straight back into the chorus again. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, Dave's, come up, Dave's come up with the same, the Gladiators theme for Mark McGeady. Absolutely. Yes. Get the yeah. Gladiators theme going for Mark McGeady. I want more. I but like we've done two hours question, now. I think yeah. we need to wrap this up. To be fair, I realise this. There's one question here, which we'll just say it. Someone's asked, "What? Does anyone know what darts Peter Wright's going to use at the Worlds?" Who give? Who knows? Peter Wright doesn't even know what. No. It's, it's only Monday. Monday. Um. Yeah. Um. So yeah, your guess is as good as good as mine. Like we say, I didn't realise that we'd waffled for nearly two hours. Huh of your time ladies and gentlemen this is what happens when you're having fun the chat room has been absolutely mint tonight it has been off the scale thank you very much everyone that has joined the live land tonight it's been one of my favorites because when when time goes like that you just don't realize it and we've had a great laugh on man this monday night of course we have some absolute belting stuff coming up from friday we will have the live blog the walk on, the pod, all the reaction from Milton Keynes. So you don't need to go anywhere else here at Online Darts. We are your one stop shop for the Labrooks Masters this weekend. So keep an eye out. I've been Phil Bars, as always, joined by Jack Gobbywell, Garwood, and Jala Theaton. Gentlemen, absolute pleasure. We will see you guys for the walk on on Friday. Enjoy yourself. <laughs>